Good morning, everyone. Welcome to The Water's Edge. Whether you're joining us online through Facebook or YouTube, or if you're right here live with us in person, we are delighted to have you. And if you're joining us virtually, remember to hit that like button, share our content, or drop a comment just to let us know you're here. And for those in the room, we have some really important updates just for you. If you have little ones, our Nursery and Kids Church are set up just across in the lobby, providing a safe and engaging environment for all of them. And the heart of our community is our volunteers, and we're always looking for more passionate individuals to join us. To get involved, simply scan the barcode on the screen or text the word volunteer to 844-793-7384. And let's not forget, we're a welcoming space for everyone, especially those facing challenges. If you know anyone in need, extend an invitation to join us in person or share our online content with them. Now get ready for an uplifting experience this morning as we come together in worship and receive a powerful message from Pastor Tony. Welcome everyone. My name is Ryan Dickerson and recently I've had the opportunity to sit down with some of our incredible youth group kids who came to us and wanted to share what God has done in their lives since they joined the youth group. So just sit back and get ready to hear some amazing testimonies of how God has moved in these young kids' lives. How long have you been a part of the youth group? I've been a part of the youth group for about two years. How long have you been a part of the youth group? Two years. Um, I understand you've been with the youth group for? Around a year. About a year now, I thought so. Are you enjoying it? Yes, a lot. So how has participating in the youth group strengthened your faith or made you feel closer to God? Well, just being around like the whole youth family, it's definitely an experience. Whenever you are surrounded with his presence, you get like a craving to be closer to him. It's definitely the people around. Uh, as soon as you walk in the doors, the leaders and the youth, you can you can feel that they care for you and that they love you. I used to doubt God a lot when I was, like, before everything, all the stuff I would go through. Um, but after coming to youth group and making the friends and relationships that I've made, it's definitely brought me a lot closer and I've learned more. Yeah, there was a camp, uh, it was called Move 18, and uh, it was the last night and we were all worshiping and the singer told us to throw up our hands and to not care if anyone was looking or watching or gonna tingle your fingers. And uh, we all, like I felt God move through that, that, that building. Uh, he had us all like weeping and the songs were amazing. Around like January, 2023, I had stopped being friends with my best friend in the whole world. And the night before Easter, I just like remember crying to my mom, saying how much I missed her being in my life. And my mom just kept telling me like, if God wants her in my life, like he will bring her back to me, like we will find our way to each other. And the next morning, I wake up to a notification from her saying that she misses me and we need to talk about what happened. And ever since then, like, we've just been close, and I know that was God speaking through her to me and showing himself to me. I was in two really bad car accidents, and um, the first one, we had lost control of my best friend's truck, and it had rolled into a ditch. And then we were waiting for 911 to come. We were just waiting in the ditch, like, on the side of the road, kind of. And this car came out of nowhere, distracted and speeding and just hit us. I don't really remember much because I got knocked unconscious, but I know God was with us because we're both okay. Before I started coming to youth group, like I always thought that people had to forgive me first before God did, which is not true. I've learned that God will always forgive me no matter what other people think. Uh, I never like, I didn't really believe in him, but after I came to youth, I knew like, even though you can't see him, He's always there and watching over you. 
God, no matter where you come from or what you've done, He'll always be there for you. He's always chasing after you. Man, that's some really life-changing stories we've heard from the incredible kids that come to our youth group on Wednesdays. And that's what we're all about here at YG at the Water's Edge. We want to bring these kids closer to God. We want to strengthen their faith. We want them to know more about Jesus. And if you feel as though that can benefit your kid and they happen to be in 6th through 12th grade, we would love to have you join us on Wednesday nights from 5 to 7.30. We can't wait to see you there. What's up, everyone? Good morning and welcome to our Sunday morning Water's Edge online worship experience. Once again, thank you so very much for tuning in, hanging out with us today. For those of you that continue to like and share these online worship experiences with your circle of influence, thank you so very much for doing that. Continue to do that. We have people that are tuning in from all over the place. They're getting help with their life and their faith and their inner endurance. So continue to do that. Also, for those of you that continue to worship with us online through giving and generosity, and that's a great way to worship. Thank you so very much for doing that. Continue to do that. We're throwing up some pictures right now for you to see of our cooling center. We've been doing this almost every day during the summer to provide a very safe and compassionate atmosphere for people who are struggling with the heat and with the elements and with the weather. We're able to feed them and love on them and provide a very, very good atmosphere for them to get in out of the weather. And that's all because of you and your love and your generosity. I told our church last week that there was a very good restaurant in town that served amazing food, but they never charged for that food whatsoever. They just gave away free food. That restaurant would go out of business. Well, in the same way as the Water's Edge, we love to help. We love to minister. We love to serve. And the only way we can do that is if our people believe in what we're doing and they invest and that they give. And when you worship with us through giving, that means that your life is a part of something bigger than yourself. As you see in these pictures, you're a part of a bigger love, a bigger compassion, a bigger mission, a bigger vision, and a bigger purpose. And so if you love the water's edge, if it helps your life, if it helps your faith, and you believe in what we do, then thank you so very much for giving and worshiping with us through generosity. And you're going to help us be the hands and feet of the, of the love of Jesus Christ to our city and to our community. Today we continue with our current series entitled Sunsets. And this series is very, very exciting as we start a brand new school year. But this series is also about deep, deep transition changes in our life. Sometimes very, very important things, good or bad in our life, can come to an end. Maybe there was some pain in your heart. Maybe there was joy in your heart, stress in your heart, exhaustion in your heart, comfort or guilt in your life. But now, whatever it is, it's coming to an end. There's going to be a transition. There's going to be a change. There's going to be a letting go of what was and a starting over with something brand new. And the question is, how do we get ready for these sunset traditional moments in our life, whether they're good or whether they're bad. Now, I told you last week that I do love a beautiful sunset more than I love a beautiful sunrise. And the reason why I love a beautiful sunset is because it's just a great way to reflect. It's a great way to reflect when the day is coming to an end and you just start to meditate and think about everything that's going on in your heart, in your mind, in your spirit. This day was filled with trials or good news, but this day is coming to an end and tomorrow is a brand new day. This day was filled with worry or joy, but this day is coming to an end. The sun is about to set and tomorrow morning is going to be a brand new day. The question that most people ask today is this, how do I survive all these changes that I'm going through? My life is going through some very difficult transitional sunset changes. How do I survive them? But a better question to ask is not, how do I survive all these changes? A better question to ask is this, how do I embrace these changes so I can learn from them and grow from them? so they can make my faith stronger and my spirit stronger and my soul stronger. Jesus would ask a lot of creative questions to his followers, to the crowds, to his disciples to get them ready for these sunset traditional moments in our life. The season of your life is ending. Another season of your life is about to begin. It can be very tough, confusing, and difficult. How do I get ready for these changes? Not how do I survive them, but how do I get prepared and ready for them so I can embrace Embrace them and learn from them and grow from them. I had several people approach me last week after the service and this is what they told me. That it felt like God was speaking directly to them and it answered a lot of questions about their life. 
They told me that it answered a lot of questions about their life and that they felt like Jesus moved on them during the service. And that's what Jesus does. And that's what we're about. Jesus moves on us with his love when we worship him. Jesus moves on us with his grace when we worship him. Jesus moves on us with his mercy and his purpose and his significance and his forgiveness when we worship him. And that's what we're chasing after today. We want to have real experiences with the real God out of heaven who loves us and who gives us purpose in life. And so that's what we want for you today and for all of us. We want to experience God. We want God to speak to our hearts and we want God to move on us. And that's what Jesus does. But not every question in our life is going to get answered. Sometimes you and I go through painful, painful circumstances, painful storms, painful difficulties, and we have a lot of why questions and a lot of how questions. Why did this happen and how can I deal with it? Why is this going on in my life and how can I overcome this? And let me tell you something, not all of our why questions and not all of our how questions are going to get answered. And so today, if you feel guilty for asking God why, understand that even Jesus, the one that we worship, the one that we sing to, the one that we pray to, the one that we follow, he even asks God the Father why. We find Jesus on the cross after he had been beaten, after he had been tortured, after he had been humiliated and arrested in front of the crowds, they nailed him to the cross. He starts to pray and cry out to the Father. And one of the first things he says to the Father is, why have you left me? Why have you bailed on me? Why have you forsaken me? And sometimes you and I go through the same thing in life. We're going through darkness in life, confusion in life, difficulty in life, storms in life, battles in life. And one of our first gut reactions is this life is difficult life is tough God why God how why is this happening and how can I deal with it and you have to understand don't feel guilty for that because even Jesus Christ the one that we're worshiping today asked God the Father why and we also want you to know that because we understand that life is difficult and life can be a heavy burden that not only does God love you and Jesus stands with you but we here at the water's edge your brothers and sisters at the water's edge we stand with you also here's an honest reality if you're still with me Sam, I'm still with you sometimes it always feels like we're faking it I don't know about you but sometimes in my life it feels like I'm faking it Sometimes we all go through that. There's this storm that's raging in my heart. There's this storm that's raging in my mind. There's this storm that's raging in my personal battle. It's like on the inside, I have this serious battle with heartache, but I don't want anyone to know about it. I have this serious battle with loneliness, but I'm not sure if I want anyone to know about it. There's this serious battle with the unknown. There's this serious battle with a feeling. There's this serious battle with a temptation or with a secret. I don't want anyone to know about it. Sometimes we all feel like we're faking it. I only want to show you that I'm on top of things. I only want to show you those moments in my life when I seem happy. Those moments in my life when I seem faithful. Those moments in my life when I seem strong. I don't want you to know sometimes there's a serious battle raging in my gut and raging in my heart. Sometimes it all feels like we're faking it, especially when something happens in our life that makes us want to ask God why. We don't want anyone to know that about us. We don't want anyone to know or think that we're going through something that caused us to lay down at night and say, God, why and how? Why am I going through this and how can I deal with it? So imagine the scene. Because of my sin and yours, they take Jesus, who is innocent, and they beat him and torture him and nail him to the cross. And on the cross in front of everyone, he says, God, why? Father, why? You ever been hurt? You ever experienced suffering and pain? You ever been rejected? You ever been abused? Have you ever felt the silence of God when you prayed? Have you ever suffered in this life? Here's the kicker. So has Jesus Christ. Have you ever wanted to ask God why? So has Jesus Christ, the very one that we love and worship today. And so when we want to know where is Jesus when I hurt, this is what we know. The answer is that he's right there with us every step of the way. When you shed a tear, so does he. When you hurt, 
so does he. When you want to ask God why, he's right there with you, with his arms around you, loving on you. And sometimes things happen to us in this life and we have no control over it. I didn't cause it. It's not a consequence of something that I did. It's not because of evil. It just happens and it crushes our world. An accident, it just happens. Something with our child, it just happens. Something in our health, it just happens. A doctor's report, it just happens. We lose a job, it just happens. A pandemic, it just happens. Hurricanes, it just happens. Bankruptcy, it just happens. We lose a friend, it just happens. I didn't do anything to cause this. It's not a consequence of something that I did. We know that God's not playing games with us. And so there's two real facts that I want you to understand today. And they, not, they probably won't make us feel any better, but they will give us some clarity. The first fact is this, and notice this today. If you're still with me, Sam's so still with you. Number one, the world is deeply broken because of the fall in the beginning. Genesis chapter 2, verse 17. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, don't eat. For the day that you eat it, you will surely die. When Adam and Eve ate, death entered the world. Brokenness entered the world, murder, jealousy, lies, hate, rebellion, temptation, pain, suffering entered the world the moment they ate. Everything broke and everything remains broken since the beginning. The reason why people get cancer is not because of a consequence. It's because brokenness still happens because the world is still broken. The reason why little kids are born crippled and never given a chance is not because someone did something wrong. It's because brokenness still happens because the world is still broken. The reason why good people get multiple sclerosis is not because they did something wrong. It's because brokenness still happens because the world is is still broken. You and I go through things in this life, not because we deserve it and not because we ask for it and not because we did something to cause it. Sometimes brokenness still happens because the world is still broken and that makes us long for Jesus to return. I know in my life when a trial happens that I can't control, it's because of brokenness in this world. First, in, in John chapter 8 verse 23 it states this, Jesus said to them, you're from below, I'm from above, you're from this world I am not from this world as Jesus was talking to the religious leaders he says this I am God I am not like you you are not like me you're from the earth I'm from heaven you're from the world I am not from this world so understand something that not everything that happens in this broken world is of God because God is not of this world Sometimes broken things still happen in this world because the world is still broken and it won't be put back together again until Jesus returns. The second fact is this, and this is a tough one. Notice this, how you and I respond to trials that's beyond our control shows the world what's really in our heart. The bigger question is not, God, why is this happening? That's not the question. The bigger question is this, God, how do I respond to what's happening so people can see how real you are in my life? It's not this, God, God, why and how? God, why and how? It's this. God, how should I respond to this so people can see how real you are and how much I love you in my life? James chapter 1, starting in verse 2. Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of all various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces this steadfastness. Verse 4, and let steadfastness have its full effect that you may be perfect and complete and mature and lacking nothing. Notice what James says, as followers of Jesus, we have all these trials in our life. We face trials of various kinds, battles, struggles, storms, and it doesn't say why, it just says that we will. And when we do, James says that it's going to test our faith. Now everyone look right here. You're given a test to show you your progress or your lack of progress. When you and I are given a test, it's to show you and I what we have on the inside of us, what we've learned, what we've embraced, how we've grown or how we've not grown. And right here, James, the half-brother of Jesus, says that God will allow your faith to be tested. Why? Because it's going to show you what's really deep down inside of your faith. These tests will show you what's deep down inside of you, the hope and the endurance that's deep inside of you because of Jesus, the resolve and the love that's deep inside of you because of Jesus, the faith and the grace and the potential joy that's deep inside of you because of Jesus Christ. First Peter chapter 1 verses 6 through 7, if you're still with me, Sam's so still with you. So be truly glad. Be glad. There is a wonderful joy ahead, 
even though you must endure trials for a little while. These trials will show you that your faith is real and genuine. It's being tested as fire tests and purifies gold. Though your faith is far more precious than gold. So when your faith remains strong through many trials and tests, it'll bring you much praise and glory and honor on the day when Jesus Christ is revealed to the whole world. At the end of the day, Peter and James say that our faith gets tested to show you and I where our faith is at. The growth, the progress or the lack of it to show us what's deep inside of us. And when people see a real and a genuine tested faith in us, when people see that you and I have been through battles, giants, mountains, valleys, storms, heartache, pain, difficulty, our faith is tested and we hold on to it, then that's when they say, I see a real God. I see a real love. I see a real compassion. I see a real faith. They go through difficulty in life and they keep hanging on to God. And that's real. And the world pays attention. The rejection of the cross, the loneliness of the cross, the excruciating pain of the cross. Jesus died so you could live. Jesus died so you could live. He went through all that so he could offer us and so we could receive agape love and new life in our, in our heart. So we could receive salvation and purpose in our heart. So we could receive purpose and significance in our heart. And we know life can be very difficult because you and I can face many uncontrollable trials, but we also know how much God loves us and Jesus proved that love for us on the cross. And so considering the cross and everything that Jesus went through on the cross for you and I. He died so we could live. If Jesus was to walk up to us today, and I'm going to leave you with this, and ask us another question in this pop quiz about our life, this is the next question that I think he would ask. Last week, he asked us this question, will you let me love you? But this week, he's going to ask this question, and this is what it is, and notice this. When you have the ability to enjoy life, but you constantly choose not to, Why? Something has become painfully clear to me recently, and this is what it is. Life is way too short, and God loves us way too much for you and I not to enjoy life. So here's some questions to think about, because many of you today are going through life, and you have no joy, no peace, no comfort, no happiness. You don't have peace with other people. You don't have peace in your soul. You don't have joy with other people. You don't have joy in your soul. You are surviving this life and you're not living this life. Look at me. Jesus died so you could live and enjoy life. And so considering all that, here's a few final questions to think about. Number one, if you struggle with depression, then are you intentionally trying to avoid depressing triggers? Because if not, you're not trying to enjoy your life. And if you keep drowning yourself in these triggers that make your depression and sadness worse, not only can you not enjoy your life, but the other people in your life can't enjoy theirs either because you can only be as happy as the happiest people you're around. Listen to me. You can only be as happy as the happiest people that you're around. If that song or that place makes those down feelings worse. If that picture or that memory makes those down feelings worse. If that thought pattern or that source of guilt makes those down feelings worse, then avoid it. Turn the song off. Stop looking at the picture. Stop trying to remember those memories. If there's a trigger that makes your sadness worse, stop giving in to the triggers. Why? Because Jesus died so you could live. Work hard to enjoy this life that is short and stop drowning and swimming in those triggers that make your sadness and your emotions and your depression worse. The second question is this. If you still love me, say I still love you. Don't lie. Are your expectations too high of the other people in your life? It's no one else's job to be your source of purpose. No one else's job to be your source of happiness. Your emotional and mental stability is not someone else's responsibility. It's no one else's job to manage your fears. No one else's job in your life to manage your breakdowns. No one else's job in your life to manage your anxieties, to manage your purpose, to manage your significance in life. It's unfair to ask the other people in your life to be controlled by your feelings. Your kids don't need to be controlled by your feelings. The other people in your life don't need to be moved and controlled by your feelings. Sometimes we get our feelings hurt way too easily. Why? 
because we build up all of these expectations in our life that we place on other people. And even if they don't know it, we think they should know it. And when they don't meet our expectations that we placed on them unfairly, even when they don't know it, then this is what happens. Our feelings get hurt because our expectations were broken and those other people were never meant to meet those expectations. And so now they can't enjoy their life and you can't enjoy yours either. If we want to be happy in this short life, you have to stop placing unfair expectations on the lives of the other people. Stop blaming others for your happiness or unhappiness. Stop being a victim. Stop blaming others for your happiness or unhappiness. Stop being a victim and take charge of this life that is short and learn how to enjoy it. Last question, if you're still with me, Sam's so still with you. Are you making excuses for the state of your life or are you being proactive to change your life? Jesus died on the cross so we could live. You and I could make a lot of excuses to stay in the state that we're in. You can continue to hold on to that sadness if you want to, that excuse, that depression, whatever it is. Or you can stop making excuses. I'm this way because of that. This happened to me a long time ago and so this is why I'm this way. They did this, and so this is why I struggle with that. No, no. Stop making excuses for why your life is the way it is and be proactive to make changes in your life. You say, Tony, why? Because Jesus died so you could live. And here's a shocker. God wants you to enjoy your life. He wants us to. Why would anyone want to have anything to do with our faith if all we are is miserable people? Jesus died so you could be happy. Why aren't you? Jesus died so you could have joy. Why don't you have it? When will you grab it? When will you find it? In the cross, we find hope and purpose. In the cross, we find direction and love, a new beginning, salvation, forgiveness and peace. He died so we could live. If God could ask us one question today, it would be this. If you have the ability to enjoy life, but you constantly choose not to through tension with others, why? Through anger? Why are you so angry? Because your expectations aren't being met? You're choosing not to enjoy life. Through grudges, you can't enjoy your life if you have a grudge. Let it go. Through triggers, stop swimming in them. Stop drowning in them. Avoid them. You said, Tony, how? Here's how. If you're ready for it, say I'm ready. Avoid them. Not hard to figure out. Unwise choices, why? You could enjoy your life, but you're not because of excuses. Why? Blaming others, why? Guilt and regret, why? Again, Jesus died so we could live. So let's enjoy this life that we have because it's a short life. And when our faith is tested, we hold on to our joy and our strength and our endurance. And when people look at us, that's when they say, that faith is real and I want to know more about that. Thank you so very much for hanging out with us today. Thank you so very much for tuning in. Now stay tuned in for an amazing time of worship with the amazing Water's Edge worship team. We cannot wait to see you back next week and we love you all. Yeah.
the lion and the lamb Every knee will bow before Him To open up the gates Make way before the King of Kings Our God who comes to save is here to set the captives free. For who can stop the Lord Almighty? Our God is the Lion, the Lion of Judah. He's roaring with power and fighting our battles. Every knee will bow before Him. message from Pastor Tony, and we sincerely hope today's worship experience have left you feeling encouraged and inspired. And if you found a connection in the service and want to stay tuned the rest of the week on social media, you can check us out at Water's Edge Gathering on Facebook or Water's Edge underscore LC on Instagram. And for a more interactive experience, consider downloading our app. It enables you to participate in online giving, enjoy worship songs, and replay messages from Pastor Tony. And whether you're curious about salvation and baptism, interested in volunteering, or have a prayer request, make your way to the lobby to the Welcome Center and our wonderful volunteers will get you plugged in. We absolutely love you guys and appreciate each and every one of you. And we're looking forward to seeing you back next week at the Water's Edge where everyone has a place to belong.